Your body is banging, baby, I love the way you're flown it Time to give it to daddy, sugar, now tell me how you want it Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, uh, we're gonna have to be that uh, that generation of parents that that goes and teaches uh, our children about this. You know, let them know that yeah, there is social media. This is the dark side to it, and how it could be influential. But this is also the good side that you can use and be influential on on a positive note. Um, right now, um, if you look at it, you know we're more focused on the negative side because negativity sells. You know, it goes it goes on to the news. You know, it's, we're gonna it's, change that. We're gonna change that. <laughs> facts. <laughs> right. So to all you parents out there, you know, currently or for parents to be, it's really important uh, that you step into your children's lives and, and really like, you know, make sure that if they're going to be influenced by something that you you have some sort of say in it to to guide them, because a lot of our children are lost nowadays. And I'm not saying all of them. That's that's not the narrative I'm trying to push out. But for the prop for the for the children that are having these problems, this is how you navigate through that. And this is how you mitigate risk. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. And like, the thing is like, you know, I feel like, like you were saying, like, it's just most people are, you know, gravitated towards the negative. Cause like you said, it sells, but like, that doesn't have to be, you know, done like that. You know what I'm saying? Like people can make, you know, things that are positive into great content or things that sell. So like, that's why I'm like, we got to definitely change that. Cause like, that's just something that just shouldn't be going on. Like it, it happens and it's not right, but it does. And it can be changed. And if we start, if we start the train, we can get it going and it'll only, you know, continue to go. You know what I'm saying? More people will want to bandwagon, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? But like, honestly, it's just like, it's, it's, it's terrible that, you know, all this bad and negative, you know, negativity sells and stuff like that. But like, you know, as long as we start it, if, you know, even if it wasn't us to start, you know what I'm saying? As long as we continue, you know, even if we're starting somewhere else and we're continuing and trying to make it go, you know, the more people will do it, the better. Eventually, like I said, people will bandwagon and do it as well. The thing is, there's so many things you could do to make things, you know, more positive and everything like that. And like, I, I just tend to see the negative and the positive all the time. And, you know, I tend to see that the positive tends to work out more actually too. And it works out for the better. So it's like, for the most part, if you if the, if the positives are always going to work better and a lot of times, you know, it just runs smoother and smoother and everything like that, as long as there's enough people that agree that it's a problem and, you know, want to change it. All we need is enough people to, you know, show that, you know, it's actually working, it's doing well and it's working well. You know what I'm saying? And if it is, like I said, more people are bandwagon. For this example, reminds me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Brother. No, for example. And, you know, people, uh, cause like, cause like also the main thing is like, um, pop culture, because that was the whole uh, point of the conversation, how people look at pop culture. For example, I, I ask people, yo, when you look at pop culture, do you take the positives that come out of what people say or the negatives? And they tell me, oh, I don't care as long as it entertains me. Because there's this, again, there's this whole thing, the whole beef, I guess, with Drake and Kanye about, you know, rap and stuff i i covered it because also my thing is about uh rappers and stuff a rap type channel and they were talking about you know they were talking about you know the whole rap industry going off because of you know beef between other rappers and the whole drake versus Kanye. oh he disses it he disses and honestly a lot of the beef that gets perpetuated between the rap industry because the main thing is i talk about rap on this channel a lot because i'm a, a rap channel but a lot of the stuff that talks about a lot of the, the the beef perpetuated by rappers is because of the fans. The fans want to see this. Why aren't the fans, you know, trending, you know, an upcoming musician? Why aren't the fans trending? Maybe somebody's working on their purpose. You know, they actually want to make a good landmark of the industry. It's because, see, and I think there's a study that you know they did. You know, when I was back in when I was back in my psychology class, that people love stuff that they cannot that they cannot have and they love stuff that is in conflict. They love conflict. Why do we watch a movie? Because there's conflict arise in that movie. Why do we love the Avengers movie? Because there's conflict in that movie. People we love also, conflict. 
but but we also do love when the you know it get that gets solved by the end or if there's a cliffhanger and then it eventually gets solved so see what i'm saying yes the conflict does spark an interest but so does the solution you know what i'm saying now now the solution if it was just a solution you know throughout the whole movie people wouldn't like it but if there's a conflict right. and a solution in your content people will like it so but see, see even then in that case you see a lot of people for example with movies and stuff people wanted to keep going on. Like, um, people are like, where's the next sequel? Because people want to see more and more and more. People are not satisfied with the one ending. Same thing with the whole, you know, Eric knows, like the whole Fresh and Fit versus Abba and Preach drama. Like, people still want to see more of that drama. People go, oh, when's the boxing match? Yeah, when's they want to see him fight, bro. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, the people like to see the conflict. But you, see, the thing is, when it comes to, you know, if you have, say, a movie, and whether it's a cliffhanger or not, you know, but say it's not a cliffhanger. Say it's it, there's a problem, there's a solution. By the end of the movie, you're all good. But you could still continue it and have a new issue based off of what just happened. Continue that, you know what I'm saying? And then eventually by the end of that movie, have another solution. You know what I'm saying? So like, and you could continue that and you can go on forever. So there's ways around that. You know what I'm saying? Like of people wanting issues. Yes, people do want issues. They, they're they entertained by the issues. They're entertained by, you know, this, these big problems or these things that happen that make actually the best films and uh, stuff like that. But the thing is, like I said, we got to be the change we wish to see in the world. And if we see that a problem solution and then another, you know, it's basically a series to it and people will watch it, people will be entertained and it could still be amazing, but it will be good rather than bad. Have an ending on a conflict. You know what I'm saying? Ending on a conflict is never usually good. Ending on a conflict might sell, but ending on a conflict ain't good when it comes to influences and knowledge and experience and all this. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not. You kind of need to, because I, I don't know about you guys, but when you guys watch a movie, do you try to see what they're trying to, you know, um, basically what they're trying to show? Because a lot of times there's a, there's a, there's a, like, I'm trying to see, I think how to explain this. There's like a, uh, there's usually an issue to every single movie that relates to something in real life, whether it's fantasy or not. You know what I'm saying? There's almost always, uh, I've always noticed that every time I watch the movie, they're relating this issue to this, this, or that, you know what I'm saying? In real life. Even it, sometimes they, they're more, you know, up, up, you know, upfront about it, but other times they kind of just, you know, they throw it in there and let you catch it or let you see it. You know what I'm saying? And like, I noticed that. And like, the thing is, if, if all of those movies that you watch though, have, you know, a problem that ends in a solution, whether it be a series or not, you know what I'm saying? I feel like so many more people would be influenced positively than negatively. You know what I'm saying? And that doesn't have to be just movies. That could be music, movies, content creation, anything. If you always show that every conflict has a solution, I think people will be smarter, more willing to want to learn about things, more willing to be able to come up with solutions to their problems or other people's problems or world issues or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to I, I want to touch right. on a few things that you said. Um, All right. Um, if you look at like the hero's journey uh, format in terms of movies, uh, it's usually like, you know, in the beginning, the hero has like some kind of contention with their like parents. And then there's like some sort of conflict and like at the climax is is when things are most like dramatic, you know, which is where everybody's attention is at that negative point. And then, and then I, I know you guys remember looking at the scale of how they do like uh, plots, you know, it's like the beginning and then it goes up to climax and then resolution, which would be our positive uh, stuff right there. And I, I guess what I'm trying to say is this ties into like, to like that, that format, you know, where everybody's more in tune with like the climax of the movie. And then towards like the end when everybody's like hugging and kissing and then everybody's like, okay, you know, like, yeah, it's a positive message, but then you start losing attention. And I, I agree with you. I think there needs to be more emphasis on the solution. If anything, they need to make that graph like all the way like skewed up, you know, to yeah. where like the solution is like the climax. Exactly. You know? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say like, you know what they could do if they want to end it on like, a, you know, a really high note, they can end it like that. They can even make it a cliffhanger if they want to. But the thing is, they need to make, instead of the whole, you know, problem being the climax, they need to make the problem being, you know, the rising action. And then, you know, the solution maybe towards the top or towards the, you know, the top 
end of going down or something, you know what I'm saying? Just to where people are still paying attention and still in there and everything like that. And still, you know, focusing on what's going on. Cause I see that all the time. Like there's a lot of times people even miss this. They go to see a movie or something like that, or they're watching a movie and like, I tend to watch the whole thing even past the credits because sometimes after the credits, there tends to be yeah, something that everybody misses. And the <laughs> thing is, people are sitting there, they, they get distracted towards the end because it ended on a bad, like the climax was like ended on a bad note, basically. So as it starts falling, they get bored, they start to leave. But then the credits come or something like that, and then they show the solution or something like that. But nobody's there to see it because they weren't entertained by that part. Just to circle back on what you said, I completely agree. And you know what? As an analogy, that last thing that you see at the end of the credits could uh, could be, in our example, the message. And a lot of people are missing that message of that conflict and that resolution. And, and at that end, that message, they just skip past that and go on to the next conflict. Exactly. You know, getting, getting that hit of like dopamine, you know, to satisfy the entertainment. Um and if, you know, just circling back, if we were to look at the current state of the world right now, you know, uh, beef like Drake and, and and Kanye West is so influential to the point where people are like, you know, they choose sides. And this goes on to gang music. This goes on to, you know, other types of uh, beef, beef music. It's to the point where people would like, you know, get into fights in the comic section or, or, or shoot at each other or, you know, you know, at, at its extremists. Um, but yeah, like given our current state, that's 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 what that's that's what the world is uh, is more focused on right now. And so how I guess like my question would be, how would we influence it to the point where uh, we're more focused on like the solutions? Because I think that's what me and you are getting at right there. Yeah. You know, let's 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 take the attention off of the, the climax conflict and, and, and put it more towards, you know, problem solving and you know what that that has happened in the past you know when like meek mill or, or drake they get together and they're on stage together and everybody's like that's 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 cool you know that's dope right there we, we need more examples of that i see honestly i think the way to fix this issue would be to make it known make the issue very very known and once it's known there's going to be people who come up to fix it now the, the you know what's gonna in, actually influence it is our influencers our actors our musicians our content creators all those people that people like the celebrities the the people who you know are every day throwing out content and you know whether it be good or bad we need to get more people who are influencers to make that known and once it's known then they got to start influencing properly basically positively and make that known that you know what's going to be best for everybody is if you're an influencer and you're trying to show how well that makes things work you know if you don't end on a bad note basically you know what i'm saying and you yeah end or even you know your climax or whatever is positive or ends positive you know what i'm saying like it might it might go up you know pretty bad pretty bad pretty bad but then once it's at the top it starts to you know get a lot better but still be you know the that basically that rising action or that climax so you know what i'm saying and then like i said you don't have to have it to where the solutions way at the end after the credits or even right before the credits or even during the dying action basically you know what i'm saying it could right. be at the top still and i just think people need to know this if people know this and you know it's an issue all they all we got to do basically is get the influencers to talk about it get the influencers to teach it basically you know what i'm saying they just get we got to get the influencers to know this and agree with it and if we do you know this is a good start honestly because with us talking about this we, obviously we're, we're not the biggest out there but we're not the smallest out there there's going to be a you know a decent amount of people that hear this and maybe those people some of those people you know checking in our content creators or influencers or whatever, or people who can help to make that change. So it starts, you know, with whoever wants to start trying to do it, but it just needs to be known. Hence why podcasts like these exist, right? Like this exactly. right here, what we got exactly. going on. Absolutely. I agree with you on that, brother. Exactly. Absolutely. So, and also one thing I want to say is that I think that, I think, and this may sound like kind of negative. And you were talking about how Jared Taker was talking about how, you know, there's conflict and people love to see solutions. Here's the problem with that. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying the solutions are bad or I'm not saying solutions are obviously great. We wanna, 
world in which there's obviously going to be problems, but we want a world with at least we can we can function with, which is a problem with Western society now. But the thing is that I feel like the world is already as chaotic and very chaotic, and in Merch. a way, I would say it is good, but. <laughs> people look at movies and they see all this happiness in the movies to divert them from realizing, hey, this is chaotic. People want solutions because they already know that the world is negative. Because think about something, you know, um, there's this, you know, you know, YouTuber, you know, I used to be a part of um, M- MBA, but well, what he was saying is how, why, why is it so hard for people to, why is it so hard for people to be to be good. Why do we have to teach our children to be good? Because bad comes automatically. You don't have to teach people to be bad. Like bad can happen. Like if, if there's no father in the household or there's no mother in the household, if you have no parents, like people living in the hostages, God forbid. But sometimes, you know, when people don't have that two family structure, sometimes people just go insane. People, people do dumb stuff and people do bad stuff because inherently us humans, we want to do bad. Why, why, why do we have to, why do have, why do friends, why do we have to tame people to, you know, even with friends, man, friends, you know, backstab you, they do something. And, you know, for example, you're, you know, you're talking to your children, they, you know, fight, they get into a fight, right? You got to calm their anger down. Why? Because humans are inherently bad, right? We have to control the good. So that's why there's a lot of good out there whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I think it's a good thing that we have good solutions and happy endings. However, it's kind of an escape of reality. I'm not, I'm not talking about the matrix. Or, I'm not trying to bring the matrix reference here, but it's like, it's an escape of, we don't understand how the world is chaotic. Let me bring something up with that. So yeah, you're right. It is kind of like an escape, but now if you made it known when watching a movie or even if it's not a movie, a song or whatever, if you make it, more obvious, I should say, that in the song or in the movie or in the, whatever you're referring to, that there is a lesson behind it. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, goes back to realities, lessons and stuff like that. And if you make that known or at least make it more visible or more, you know, where you're able to hear it more or see it more, you know what I'm saying? Then I think people will relate that to maybe one of their situations or life situations. And if there's that solution in it, they might know the problem and the solution to their own problems or the world's problems. So see what I'm saying? So that's what I think. I think that it just needs to be more because like certain people, they'll watch a movie or something like that. And they just don't see the, that there's, that they're relating it to a real life issue. You know what I'm saying? But they are, you know what I'm saying? So I think it needs to be more obvious that certain movies or certain songs are relating certain things to real life issues and stuff like that. And they need to, have that solution in there because if they don't have a solution there you end up you end up on that bad note and the problem is you you don't see the solution now they didn't see the solution from the beginning they didn't see the solution from the end and you got nowhere you know what i'm saying but if you show you know an issue and a solution make it entertaining and as it's rising in the climax and make it you know the solution and the problem in the climax you know what i'm saying i really think that people would look at that realize what it's what's going on realize how it relates to their life and use that situation of that song or that movie to help with their real life situation and like i, I said that could, a, be a, that could be a that could be a positive thing but here here here's the problem though like like you know there's all you know there's always drama and stuff and you know when somebody stops it somebody always wants to pick the shit up somebody or there's always that one person that's like no we got to keep this going on right and the thing is that I, I think I do love what you're saying, right? But the problem is we don't, and maybe it's just me, like I have lost faith in, you know, Western society and people here, but it's just, we don't have that idealistic mindset, right? Because the reason, but you have to think about why. Wait, 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 who's we though? Who's we? I want to know that. Not Everybody? Us. Society. Okay. okay, so society. So, <laughs> good but question. Society can be influenced. <laughs> but society, but society. Well, because we be live influenced. in the West, right? So. Yes, but society can be influenced. Are, am I wrong? Society can be influenced by their influencers and creators. No, no, no. So um, the reason why there's a there's a good ending is because to hide the fact that life doesn't always end with good. Like some people die, you know, happily. But, you know, 
when, when, when death arises, right, there's always pain and suffering. And, you know, you might think, hey, I've done so much, but I'm, I'm suffering. And, you know, and when, you know, a lot of older people tell me as I'm getting older and I'm getting aging, I'm thinking about all the dumb stuff that I did. And it, in a way, it's a positive. You could look at it positively. And I'm yeah, not it depends say, how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But, but the thing is, there's always good endings to everything because the reality is not everything ends in good things, which I, which I politely disagree. With. Yes. Yeah. But let me tell you something here. So yes, you're right. A lot of people might not have the mindset that can be changed though. You know what I'm saying? Influencers, actors, uh, musicians, celebrities that can, they can influence them. So now if we made it known, they can influence that and actually make that change because they're the ones right now in mainstream that people are paying attention to. People are listening to people aren't going and buying newspapers anymore. If they were, the news probably wouldn't be so popular. You know what I'm saying? Like that now news channels or like even the radio, most people aren't even listening to the radio. People are paying attention to the celebrities and what they think, whether their thinking is right or wrong. So if the influencers know the problems and know the solutions, all they got to do is influence their community, basically influence their people. And what they could do is they can influence the good. And if they do influence the good, that's what's going to end up happening. And that's the same thing with the solutions and the problems. If you, if the influencers are influencing the, what, you know, that there's problems and there's solutions to every problem, that's more than likely that people will pick up on that and they will actually use their problem solving skills and their abilities to see the problems and the solutions, and then actually take those problems and use those solutions to solve those problems. So, you know what I'm saying though? Like it, it's possible. It's a lot of work. And I don't think a lot of people are up for it, but there is people that are up for it. Me, me being one of them. I think I can help the cause in that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah, not course. everybody, maybe not everybody mm -hmm. can help the cause in that, but there is a lot of people who could and could potentially help tons of people see the problems and the solutions to all their problems. Or even, you know, even if I can't do it myself, if I can influence other creators to help see those, you know, to help their people that or their community or their fans see that there is problems, there is solutions, and those solutions can be used to solve those problems in almost any situation. You know what I'm saying? We can change it. It's possible. Um, it's hard. Uh, it's so possible. Let's face the facts, fellas. Um, the world needs conflict. And the reason, the reason why is because what good is a pro, what good is a solution if you don't have conflict? Agreed. You know. Um, now, because uh, because there's 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 it's like a scale, right? Uh, there has to be like there has to be a balance of of conflict and solutions. Right now, like the scale is like overweighing on 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 conflicts right now. And that's what me and Jertaker are saying to like kind of like bring the attention more on the solution. But, you know, it is a Disney fairy tale to believe that everything is going to be, uh, you know, all about solutions and stuff like that, especially when the when the money grabber is, is, is conflict. But um, I was going to say something else. I just lost my train of thought right there. Let me let me say something. This even if it is a fairy tale, even if it is a fairy tale, our fairy tales all incorrect are fairy tales all impossible no they're not they're not impossible they're unlikely see what i'm saying they're not impossible they're unlikely and because they're unlikely that means they can be persuaded to and change see what i'm saying so if there's enough people that agree or are on the same page and are aware of it it can change is it hard yes mm -hmm. but who cares if something's hard if something's hard do you just not go for it no, you could still want to go for it, even if it's hard, because if it's something positive and something good and it's possible, even if it's that slim chance that it's possible, you still want to go for it. You never know what might happen. And let me actually tell you this one situation, this one situation, uh, it's kind of drifting away a little bit, but it pertains to this. So I, I was at, you know, a fair or whatever. Right. And you, have you guys ever heard of the Made in America store? No, you've never heard of it. All right. Well, there's a store called Made in America and it has like all these goods and everything that were made in America. And um, they had at this something at the fair, you know, like uh, they had one of those types of stores there or whatever. And they had a little, you know, just a little thing way in the corner. And I went over and I read everything and I was looking and I was just like, what is this? And it was a little bucket. It had a little spot where you can, you know, put your phone number, name and email and all that stuff and throw it in the bin. And uh, the people that I was with all told me, 
you're not going to win. And I'm like, I'm not going to win what? And then they're just like, well, it says that there's a prize. I'm like, okay. I was just like, it's free. I'm not losing anything. Obviously, there's a slim chance that I'll win. But if I don't take it, I'll never know if I could win or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's like, what I got to lose? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go for it. You know what I'm saying? Because if I win, awesome. If I don't, who cares? At least I tried. You know what I'm saying? I put it in the bin. A uh, week later, I got an email saying I won. And nice. this is a true story. And I went and picked okay. up the item. It wasn't even a scam or anything. Like, I literally won the contest. And I bet you it's because nobody wanted to give it a try because they thought it was too slim of a chance they'll win and see what i'm saying there is a slim chance that you'll win a contest like that but i did win it and it's not just that situation that makes me believe that those small little chances can change you know what i'm saying something or those people that are willing to take those small little chances of changing something for the better you know what i'm saying i want to be one of those people and i hope other people will do that too because there is those slim chances can become reality even if they're looked at as fairy tales and one right. thing I have to ask is this, right? And like I said, I think you're right about, you know, you do need to have a positive mindset. Of course you do. Because if you think negative, you're going to go down negative. If you go positive, at least the positive that you can, you go positive. But like I said, you know, like, well, like you know, you talk, you talk about, you know, influence, they have to teach these things, right? No, I, I, like I said, I'm not, I, I, like I said, if, if influence, if influencers actually change, like actually make a change in society. They can change anything in society because they have the power to the youth. Exactly. And, but here, but, but like I said, it also proves the point that we human beings in natural, imagine if we didn't have any social structure, right? We would all be crazy. Like imagine we, if we're all put in, in a jungle. And like I said, it's not a bad thing. I would say it's more of a humans by natural. I would say that they're bad, but they're selfish. And like, if you put them all into a jungle, they'd be like, fighting each other for the sort have you read the book uh it's that book in 10th grade um where the the two kids are in the jungle they um you know they they have their own clan but then they work together as a group they're trying to work together as a group but they realize their differences because human nature kicks in and they end up you know killing each other off the island it's it's a really famous book that you read in high school I've never, but, yeah i never actually read it maybe maybe it's uh maybe it's part uh maybe it's the, in the part of the united states that you guys are in here because we're in totally opposite you know parts at least i am you oh, know what i'm damn, saying so no they didn't they didn't actually have us read that but honestly that sounds pretty interesting i almost want to read yeah that. <laughs> because the author was trying to talk about how human nature kicks in like i said i think that the solution you're right we can't avoid every conflict but like I said, I'm going to ask you this question, both of you. Now, there's a difference between, do you think there's a difference between doing being good and being bad versus doing the right thing and the wrong thing, right? Because sometimes I believe sometimes you could be a bad person and do the right thing. And sometimes you could be a good person and do the wrong thing. Like, what do you guys Definitely. think of I agree. good versus evil and right versus um, wrong? Well, uh, and I remember what I was going to say now. The reason why we needed conflict was because it's, it is to teach us what not to do in those cer certain situations. I mean, you go back in history, you know, with, uh, with world wars and stuff like that, Hitler and all that stuff. We, it teaches us that, you know, there's things that we're not supposed to do. Now, going back to your question, can good people do the wrong thing and vice versa, bad people do uh, good things? Yeah, um, you know, nobody's gonna be perfect, but who's uh, to dictate what's good and bad? And I could also see like a, a little point of contention to where uh, if we do make everything based on like solutions, uh, we're gonna have like some backlash of people that say, uh, why does everything have to be about solution? I just want entertainment at this point. So, you know, back to that a glass half full, glass half empty thing, looking at it at a broad perspective. Um, yeah, I mean, Good and bad is kind of subjective nowadays because I'll go back to an example, you know, of, um, you know, you know, one way kills a thousand people and the other way just kills one person, you know, and, and you got to make a choice, you know, how would you determine what's good and bad on, you know, on things like that. So it's like, it's, it's a really, Very yeah, it's a really subjective, uh, you know, thing. Uh, there's only like certain things that we know for sure are good and bad, like killing somebody. But even that, you know, what if that person was villainous, you know? So it's just like. Yeah, honestly, in my opinions on that, like that, what I would say is like, 
I don't think it really matters what's fully what people consider right or what people consider wrong. What even people consider good or bad. I don't really think that's what it is. I think what you got to take into consideration is that a lot of people follow a few things when it comes to figuring out what's right or wrong, what's bad or good. They usually use religion, morals, um, you know, society, government, influencers, you know, like their celebrities and everything like that, their lifestyle, their experiences, their family, all those different things they take into consideration and they use as things that make give them a right and wrong, a good and a bad. And now there might be somebody who has the complete opposite beliefs as you. And they think they're doing the good thing. They think they're doing the right thing. And then the opposite is thinking they're doing the right thing and they're doing the good thing. But now both of those different sides might think that the opposite is doing the bad thing or the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really think it matters what is right or what is wrong or what is bad or what is good. I just think that you should look at yourself, your situation, what you believe in and try to do the right thing or try to do the good thing. And as long as you do that and it's not negatively affecting everybody else, that's all that truly matters. It shouldn't matter whether you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing to whoever else but yourself and what you believe in. What do you think about that, Atulia? Because uh, I think Hitler uh, believed he was doing the right thing by eradicating <laughs> like said, the world. But, but though, <laughs> that's affecting multiple people. You know what I'm saying? I said, as long as you're not affecting, you know, too many people or, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you're doing what you think is right and wrong, or, you know, as long as you, as long as you're doing what you think is right or good, as long as it doesn't affect too many people, you know what I'm saying? And if you're doing the right thing and it's not affecting anybody, then you're probably doing a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh man, this is, this is a huge topic too, bro. And it's like, we see that in movies too, you know, where like, you know, the, uh, the main character he thinks he's on the good side and then he gets to know somebody that's on the bad side and realizes the bad side is actually the good side and then he's on the wrong team. I love those types of things. Yeah. <laughs> those are right. Right. Hey, um, episode those are three, right. man. Star Wars. I think Revenge, <laughs> was it the Revenge of the Sith or something? Damn, I forgot the name, but Anakin, yeah. Anakin gets influenced by Palpatine to turn on to the dark side, which creates Dark Vader. It creates a whole big energy monster, right? Because, look, actually what George Lucas said, and here's the thing, George Lucas said in Star Wars, actually, he, um, Luke technically defeats the, um, well, doesn't defeat, but technically it ends with Luke, Luke and the Jedi winning. Originally, Lucas planned the movie for Luke to turn on the dark side to make Star Wars more dark, right? And, you know, so many TV shows in which the director said, I wanted to make it dark, but I didn't want to dissatisfy the audience, right? And, like, for example... Good and right, good and bad and right and wrong is subjective. For example, a lady on the street, she's like, you know, dying, breathing for help, and I'm running on my car, and there's a pressure. Should I help her or not? Because if I don't help her, what's the point? You know, waste of time, kind of libertarian thinking, right? Well, uh, you know, I, I can do whatever I want. You know, I don't have to help her. You know, helping her, people will view you as a good person for helping her. There are people that will say, hey, no, you should worry about yourself. It doesn't matter what happens. As long as it doesn't affect you, don't get into anybody's situation. So are you a bad person for not helping somebody? Are you a good person for helping somebody? Like I said, and like I said, we shouldn't just use influencers. We, oft- we people need to start thinking of our own, right? Because one problem is I do agree that if influencers do give positive messages, you know, there's going to be a certain change, obviously. But we also, as humans, we need to start, we need to stop, put, it feels like when you put influencers for social responsibility, it feels like you have to rely on somebody else to feed you information. You're right, but but let me bring this up. You know how you said, there's just a lot of things that like, it, it doesn't always work out that way. But as of right now, as of right now, because a lot of people are hooked to social media, as of right now, people are hooked to the movies, hooked to, the, to their celebrities or the influencers. That's right now probably the best option. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're right. It shouldn't be like that. And that could change. That should change. And it could change. But as of right now, that's probably the best option to see quicker change. But now, once it's things are going for the better and people are actually seeing the good and things are seeing the solutions to the problems, that's when you could start to veer it towards somewhere else on where you're, they're learning that information, like whether it be school or their parents or what, et cetera. I think with the knowledge we, we just we just put, you know, we got our preface down right now. We know that conflict attracts to people 
Um, and we know that, uh, you know, problem solving necessarily kind of like dwindles the crowd a little bit. So I think the best like way to attack this problem would be is to start off with the conflict and then provide the solution because the conflict is what's going to hook in the, the viewer, you know, and the solution is, is going to be the message that they take that they take with as, them. As long as you show the solution fast enough, because if you wait too long to show that, show that solution, you just lost your audience. And when you lose your audience, there's only going to be a select few of it that will actually see that solution. And then the ones who don't see that solution won't really gain off of what they just experienced. You know what I'm saying? Versus the ones who are actually stuck around, which that is that select few. And that's right. what I think I, it needs to change. I agree. Yeah, there, the format definitely has to transition from conflict to problem within like a set amount of time. I definitely agree. And I also what I tend to see with uh, videos that tend to just uh, primarily focus on just a solution, they tend to get like less views. Like if you think about like money Mondays on Fresh and Fit compared to like their after hours, you know, like the views are exponentially lower on like their uh, on their videos where they're trying to like build like credit and stuff like that. But then you go into their after hours with like eight ladies and you see like somebody get Frank Castle, the hundreds of thousand more views on those. And uh, yeah, we just need that attention grabber. You know, and you I, know think what I have, think for a solution to that, actually, what you could do is you could potentially tell people that you're going to have, you know, I would, you know, I would say I would do similar things on both of them, the after party and the and the uh, the original one that you were you know, going to be doing. And what you could do is you could basically like, you know, speak what you want of in a more form, you know, or a more yeah more formal way basically, and you know, speak on what you want to speak of and everything like that. But also have you know some fun to it and make it nice, make it entertaining, make it good, make a you know a problem that people would get drawn into though too. And that solution right there, which would make your formal regular show on what you want to talk about and address. But then the after party, you make it a little less formal, more informal, more of like a fun time and everything like that. But you're also still teaching that same thing, concept, basically, from the first thing. You're just doing it in a different way. Basically, yes, that's kind of tricking people. But at the same time, too, it is an after party. It is the fun one. Yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying though? But like, it's doing, it's, it's literally, you're, you're still doing what you promised. It's just, you're doing it in a better way. I think, you know what I'm saying? Cause then you both people get what they want. You know, if they want to have more fun, you're at the fun one, you're learning still too. You're seeing the problem and the solution and everything. And you're having fun, but you know, focusing more on the fun part but versus the other one. If people aren't really, you know, about that one, they could go and, you know, sit there through the formal one and, you know, learn, you know, in a little less fun way, but still having fun. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think that's just a better way to approach it. Are we are in agreement, fellas. All right, yeah. So people, here you go. Your Saturday evening panel brought to you by Jer Taker and Eric. Thank you gentlemen for coming on for the conversation. Thank you for having me. I love the way you activate your hips and push your ass out. Got a brother rolling this so bad I'm about to pass out. Wanna dig you? And I can't even lie about it, baby. Just alleviate your clothes. I'm the fly about it. Catch you at the club. Your hips have got me feeling body talking quick to me, but I can't comprehend the meaning. Now if you wanna roll.